We greet everyone the praise of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of God, the Lord, I would like to invite those who can to stand up. I'm going to study the Gospel of John. John, chapter 2. Uh, no, Gospel. No. Evangelho, John. John 2, 11. The water transformed into wine. John 2, 11 says the following. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Lord, we praise you and thank you for yet this moment that we can enjoy a fellowship with the precious blood of Jesus that has already united at this moment, has already placed in your presence in the same way that you have operated in the midst of the praises. We ask that you continue pray, uh, helping us doing the message. We pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. The Sunday school that has finished today the topic, the first question was uh, what is the mystery of the revelation that can be established in the central, the moral control and ethical center in order to save the world? And the church answered no. Isn't that true? And the wedding of Canaan of Galilee explains exactly why religion cannot save humanity. Because humanity can only be saved by a King Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The Word says that this text that we just read here speaks about a feast, a feast that took place in a place located Cana of Galilee. And this feast was a wedding feast was the wedding, properly speaking. Because in the past, in, in Israel, when a man would get married to a woman, the families would get together and they had to make a, a contract, a covenant, where the man was set aside for that woman. And was a, a dow had to be paid so that he could uh, marry that woman. So then when every, well, the business was already organized and set up, the young man would go back to the house of his father. Then he had to build a house for his future wife. So when the house was ready, the father would approve the construction. Then he would say, now it's time for the marriage. Then they would have the wedding, the feast of, of the marriage, properly speaking. And this all has a prophetic meaning. The Bible says that Jesus is the groom and the bride is the church. Jesus comes and says, I'm going to the Father, prepare a dwelling for you. A dwelling. And I will come back once again because whatever I am, I want you to be as well. Cana of Galilee. The word Cana means to acquire or to purchase in Hebrew. And Galilee is related to the Gentiles, Cana of Galilee or the Cana of the Gentiles. It was a circle. This circle had many cities there surrounding the Sea of Galilee. And this all have a meaning, prophetic meaning. Because the feast, why was the feast in Cana of Galilee? Because there, there was a, a purchase that was made so that a bride could be purchased, acquired. And what was the price that was paid for this bride, the Tao that was paid for this bride? The Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul, they speak about how much cost 
for the dower for the bride so that the marriage could take place. And it says like so, because we have been purchased for price. First Corinthians, verse Corinthians six, verse twenty, knowing that you were not being purchased with corruptible things like silver or gold, but you have been rescued, but with precious blood of Jesus, like a blame, bless, blameless lamb was you were purchased. So this is. It speaks about the price of this bride, this church, that one day will get married with the groom, who's the Lord Jesus, is going to his home, to the dwelling he has prepared. And the text says that it was the third day. The third day is related to, to the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word says that The mother Jesus was present on this celebration, on this wedding. The mother Jesus represents Israel, and also says that they were invited for this wedding. Jesus and his this and his disciples, in spite of them being all Jewish, they represent here the church, the gen gentilic church, the Gentile church. So we see that in this feast, the wedding feast, there was also a very important person, a special person, who was the person who was hired, we can say, to prepare all things for that feast. So nothing would be missing because a wedding was a very special moment in the tradition of the Jewish people. A man will leave his father and mother who joined his wife and there will be one flesh and what God united men should not sit, set apart. So this is a moment, this is an event that should not go wrong, the marriage. So then the word says that there was the person who was responsible for the feast, who was, he typifies the Holy Spirit. The Father was present, the Son was present, and also the Holy Spirit. The Trinity was present in this feast in Cana of Galilee. But the word says that in a certain point of the feast, they ran out of wine. The wine in the Bible is related to happiness, to joy. A feast without wine is a feast without joy, without happiness. A feast without wine is, loses its luster. And that was not supposed to happen. But it also has an important meaning here. The Bible says that one day for God is like a 1,000 years, and 1,000 years like a one day. So here is numbering the period in Israel where the Lord has manifested to Israel, spoke to Israel through his prophets. But there came a moment in which God stopped speaking with Israel. The Bible uh, speaks about a period, a sign, period of silence from God, 400 years. It was a moment where the, they ran out of wine. There was no longer joy. But then Jesus comes. <coughs> he comes now to, to bring a new kind of joy. To give a new meaning to that wedding feast. The word of the Lord, my brethren, says that the mother, Jesus, when she realized that they ran out of wine, she then comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, my son, we ran out of wine. If you don't do anything, the situation is going to be very sad here. And the feast is going to finish. Because normally a feast would last seven days. 
which also has a prophetic meaning. The Lord made the world in six days, and on the seventh, He rested. It speaks about the eternal rest for man. And Jesus then said, Woman, what do I have to you? My time has not arrived yet. Jesus is speaking with his mother. And when Jesus goes to the cross of Calvary, he says, that now my time has arrived in which the Son of Man will be glorified when he makes mention of his, of his death. So it was not time yet, but there was, gonna, there was going to come a time where the Son of Man was going to be glorified. So everybody was going to see the glory of the Son of Man. And this passage in the Bible, this event, this miracle, takes place exactly in the book of John. Why the book of John? Jesus left four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the Gospel is, is in four parts. The first Gospel uh, introduces Jesus as a lion, as king. The second, the book of Mark, introduces Jesus as a lamb, as a servant, a slave. The third Gospel, the book of Luke, introduces Jesus as a man. He was a doctor. Luke was a doctor, so then he presents Jesus as a man. And the fourth gospel, which is the one we, we, which we just read here, the quote John, re it represents Jesus, an eagle flying, speaks about the divinity of Jesus, showing Jesus as God. And John himself, he says the following. <coughs> and the word became flesh and inhabited amongst us, and we saw his glory, like the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, filled with grace and truth. So then Jesus, he was present in that wedding feast. And many here are married. Uh, you are married. I don't know if everyone, but almost everyone here, one day got married, probably. They invited Jesus to participate on their wedding feast. Isn't it true? The, the Bible speaks about a string of threefold that does not break easily. Is the husband, the wife, and Jesus present. And in this wedding feast, they ran out of wine. And many times in our lives, in the life of man, we run out of wine. There's no joy. Many times in the life of the Sermon of God, also we run out of wine. There is no joy in our lives. And the Bible says, my brethren, that in order to give continuity to this feast, it was necessary the presence of the wine that needed to be joy. Service without wine is a service without joy. Service without the presence of the Holy Spirit is a service without joy. Because the Bible says, do not get drunk with the wine from this world, but fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. And there is a song also that says, this joy will never leave my heart. Why is that? Because the fire will come down from heaven. And it's speaking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus is present, there is joy in the heart of man. A man without the Holy Spirit is a man that is never happy because his joy is fleeting. It is not a lasting joy. And you know what salvation is? Like the song says, is to feel a great joy that the world does not know. So Jesus went there. He was brought. He, he went there to bring joy. And when Jesus enters into man's life, into man's marriage, he enters to bring joy, peace, comfort, comfort, refreshing, relief, and to transform. Because the miracle of Jesus, that Jesus performing that wedding feast, was not to bring something new, but it was to transform what was already there. The word says, my brethren, that when they ran out of wine in that wedding feast, Jesus said, 
my time has not come. Why was his time was not come? Because he had observed, he noticed that there were six vessels of stone there, and those vessels were for the purification of the Jewish people. They were they were there in order to wash, to sanctify, to purify the vessels. They were empty, so they did not sanctify themselves. They did not seek the Lord, the fount of living waters. That's why they didn't have the wine. They ran out of wine. They ran out of joy because when we stop seeking the Lord, when we stop and sanctify ourselves, then the wine runs out. We run out of the joy of salvation. So then Jesus said, fill those vessels with water. It was necessary for the time of the miracle to take place, for the miracle, the time of the miracle to take place, the vessels needed to be filled and filled with water. When Jesus, he comes to earth to begin his ministry, he sent another person before, it was John the Baptist. You who cry out in the desert, And when John and when John introduces himself, he appears in the Jordan River. And people came from everywhere in, in Israel towards the Jordan River in order to wash themselves up, in order to purify themselves up. So John, he was preaching at that time, repent and convert. That's what John said. So he brought a word so that the Jewish people should should repent and convert. And he would baptize because the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. So at that moment, in order for the water to be transformed, man needed to be filled. Man needed to be to repent and to convert. That's why the Bible speaks about two baptisms. And John says, I baptize you with water. The ones who filled that, those six vessels were the servants, the ones who were at work, the ones who heard the voice of the Lord and obeyed the Lord Jesus. At this wedding feast, no one knew who Jesus was. And many times, well, the disciples knew Jesus' mother knew, but not all the guests knew who Jesus was. And many times, we're participating on a wedding feast between Jesus and the church. And many times, we don't know who Jesus is yet. That's why it's so important for us to attend Sunday school. The Bible says, examine the scriptures because they testify of me and take care and that they have eternal life. And when we make mistakes, you make mistakes because you do not know the scriptures or God's power. So then the vessels, the six vessels, they were empty. They needed to be filled with water, <coughs> the water of purification. So then when they were filled with the water of purification, so then they realized they needed to wash themselves up and purify themselves. When they understood that they needed forgiveness from God for their lives, then a miracle took place. They filled, Jesus said, filled the, the vessels with water, and then they filled until it was at the top. So what was empty, and many times man's heart is empty. My soul thirsts for God, the living God, how can I present myself before God's face? But when this emptiness emptiness is filled by the water of, pur of purification, when it is filled by the Word of God, when my life is filled and your life is filled, then Jesus operates a miracle of transformation. 
And that's exactly what Jesus was doing at that moment. When the water was taken away, it was no longer water. It was now wine. Sometimes our hearts is like a, a vessel made out of stone. It's empty. But when we allow the word of the Lord to enter into our hearts, if you today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. The miracle of transformation happens. You know, my brethren, you know why? Because one, the one who is in Christ is a new creature. Everything has been made new. There's no salvation without transformation. There's no salvation. All the people that had a meeting with Jesus, they had their lives transformed. That some people may say, oh, Mary the Magdalene, she had a complicated life. She had seven evil spirits upon uh, uh, controlling her life. But she had a meeting with Jesus, and her life was transformed. In the back of our song books, there's a song that says, what I once was, I no longer am. There's no salvation without transformation. And the only one who can transform man, the natural man, that's why water, there's nothing more natural than water. Isn't it true? Water is something natural. You don't manufacture water. It's already, it already exists. Man is like this. Man is natural. True? Isn't it true? When he allows, when he invites Jesus to participate on his life, so his life is transformed. In Brazil, we even use this expression, oh, that individual, he turned from water to wine. Have you heard this expression in Brazil? He turned from water to wine. It was, it was a complete transformation from water, which is in something of natural state into a better substance, wine, which is something that brings joy, comfort, refreshing. And, and the wedding feast and the feast of the reign of the Lord that should not lack the joy of salvation, the life of the servant of God. So the word says, he began his signs. Interesting, it, that was the first miracle of Jesus. And why is that? Transforming water to wine was the first miracle. Because the first thing that happens with the life of man that knows Jesus is that he is transformed. The first thing, the first step is to have your life transformed. When Jesus comes to me, Jesus says, it's necessary for you to be born in two ways, from the water and from the Spirit. So the man that participates on the wedding feast and the wedding between Christ and the church needs to be born of the water and of the Spirit. And the one who does this transforming, this modification in our lives is the Lord Jesus. It says, he began his signs. His first sign in my life is my transformation in Christ. The first sign in your life is Jesus transforming your life. Because if you continue to be in the same way, if there is no transformation, then the feast in your life and my life, it was going to come to an end. There needs to be a transformation. There needs to be a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. I said that feast without wine is, is worthless. Because we are saved by grace. Because through grace we are saved. It's not something that comes from you. It's a gift of God. It doesn't come through work so that nobody may boast about it. So Jesus began his miracles in Can of Galilee. Because Galilee's of the Gentiles. Jesus also came to us, to all of us, the Gentiles. Because on those days, it was only for Israel. His redemption was only for Israel. God was the God of Israel. Now this God is accessible to all the nations, tribes, and tongues. But Jesus began, he started 
this project gave to us this chance, this opportunity to live a life of joy in His presence and manifested His glory. Jesus transformed me, transformed you, transformed your life, your home, your family, your marriage, and probably many times may even be going through a, a situation that is where your marriage is empty, has no fun, has lost all its luster, all the will to remain together. <coughs> but when man is willing, or if one day you call Jesus for this wedding feast, this joy will never run out. You know why? Because Jesus will be present and he will transform this thing that is, has no fun into a feast. Because marriage is a feast. It's a celebration of seven days. And it only is over. In fact, it continues, goes to the eternity, continues in eternity. So then his, his disciples believed in him. And why the disciples believed in him? Because they saw Jesus transforming water into wine. And when we see a transformation in our lives, we begin to believe. We begin to believe that Jesus has power and authority to transform the life of every man. That's why we sing the song, What I once was, I no longer am. Because now the Lord has transformed my life. The children also sang a song, To Be Faithful to do God's will and to keep His Word. Why did the miracle happen? Because the workers, the servants that were present in that feast, they obeyed the voice of Jesus. There's no miracle in disobedience. Jesus said, fill the vessels with water. Fill those empty vessels with water. If they had not filled the vessels with water, the miracle would not happen. Jesus would not make the miracle of water, but the miracle of transforming water into wine. And it was because obedience. The Bible says, Jesus said, no, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God, but the ones who do my will. So the servants were there. They saw that they need to be filled with water and the miracle happened. The miracle happened because they obeyed the order, the command of the Lord. They're filled with water and your part, my brother and sister, is to fill with water. Your life is empty. We'll be filled with water. The wedding is not good. Fill with water. Seek the Lord and the miracle will happen the miracle will take place so that the gl His glory may be manifested in your life, in my life, in our home, in our house. Amen. Let's hear a song.
Lord was showing tonight a couple, a home, a family, and there is a difficult in the relationship between the husband and the wife. They have been set apart because of the decision that one of them took. They make a, a they made a decision individually without consulting the Lord, without seeking an orientation from the Lord to their lives. <coughs> if this decision was the best for, for them, for their family, their home, they did not consult the their partner because many times they give a wise opinion, you know? So this person did not consult the Lord or their partner. <coughs> the Bible says that marriage is not two people, it's one. There will be a single flesh. Can do walk together together if they are not in agreement. How can I and my wife be together if I want to go to the north and she wants to go to the south? There needs to be agreement. Fellowship is something that happens through the blood of Jesus. And through the blood of Jesus, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us of any sin. So the situation of the scope is like this. They didn't have fellowship, and the decisions that they made, they will seriously affect the life of this family, bring harm to this family. But there is always a way. There is a way. God can give a solution to everything. The Bible says that for men, there are things that are impossible, but, not, but for God, nothing is impossible. If you believe in what God has revealed for you tonight, you will see the glory of God manifesting in your life. So the Lord has shown that there is a concern from the part of one of, of the partners. They even have asked forgiveness from the Lord. And the Lord is telling this couple that He will use His mercy towards them and will deliver them from this situation so that His glory, His name may be glorified in their lives. Amen. The servants, they obeyed the revelation and, and a miracle took place. So in order for a miracle to happen, they need to understand the revelation of the Lord and God will manifest their power, His might, and His mercy. Amen.
stand up. Eternal Father, I want to praise you, Lord, glorify you, and thank you for our lives because we are in your presence, because of the transformation they have given us, for all the blessings and benefits that you have operated in our midst. We praise you, glorify you, Father, for yet this night, for this place, for the lives that are here. We ask, Father, that you may also use causing this their lives this transformation so that the natural man may become be uh, transformed into a spiritual man so that he may know the mystery he and she may know the mysteries from the lord for the return of the lord and savior jesus christ bless them their lives spiritually material bless their homes their family members the ones who are sick in your house also ask for your blessing at this moment through the power 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 of the blood of Jesus, who may be healing them, restoring their health, Lord. Give us also a week of peace, a week of deliverances, a week of victories and experiences with you, Lord. We pray to you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and eternal consolation the Holy Spirit may be with the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. And you who are with us at this moment, you are in the service in presence. If you need a prayer, an assistance, a clarification regarding the word of what was said tonight, remain where you are and raise your hand so that we may identify you and that you may receive the proper assistance. And there are a couple of brethren who are with us through Zoom. There are a couple of brethren there. There are also a couple of deacons and ushers that can give you the proper assistance. Just raise your hand in Zoom and we'll receive assistance. I'd like to remind the church, on Tuesday, we have uh, our service uh, regarding Sunday school. On Tuesday at 8 and Thursday, we have a service in Zoom. On Wednesday, we have a women's service, also Zoom at 8. And a weekend, we have Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night, we have a service in presence here. And the brethren who can be with, uh, with us this coming Saturday, we are going to give continuity to the demolition of the place that we are going to rebuild, uh, we are going to build a new church. They're going to be there at 9 o'clock in the morning, Saturday. The men that can, the can are willing, we are going to finish demolishing what is left there so that we can begin our construction. If anybody needs a prayer, just raise your hand and to all the peace of the Lord. <laughs> 